Hello, and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope all today you're being grand and all in your world. Today, people of the tube, I bring you this guitar. I've wanted to have this model of guitar on this channel since I knew of its, knew of its existence. This is a late 70s, early 80s uh, K slash Univox Effector guitar. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen these things before floating around the place. Uh, I've been after one for absolutely ages. Um, I remember in Old Hat we had one of these, but it was broken, didn't work, uh, it was kind of in pieces. It, it, it just wasn't in, it just wasn't a functioning example, but I saw it and I thought, that's really cool. And then again, I was really upset when it, it didn't work and it was kind of not, not really together. And over the years I've seen the odd one here and there. Uh, mainly not for sale. Uh, a lot of these things, when they come up, like, you know, people are just kind of like, you know, people just have them, or they're broken, you know. And um, Gallagher's in Grimsby actually have one of these hung on the wall, and I, I pestered Lee for quite a while to, uh, to, to buy it, but uh, he wasn't selling that one. And that's fair enough, because now I have my own. So let me tell you the story of how I got this really quick. So I went to buy another guitar, actually, another Les Paul copy, which you will see in the future. Um... And uh, as I was walking to the back of the shop, in the back of this shop they had like a little kind of like band studio area where the guy said, oh, you can try the guitar out if you want before you buy it. So I, I was walking through to the back room with this other guitar, this other Les Paul copy, and hung on the wall was this. And I was just like, well, I'm looking at that when I come back out, aren't I? So agreed to buy this other Les Paul because it was amazing and you'll see that in a bit. And then I thought, I just said to the guy, I said, can I try the K-Effector? And he was like, why? Yeah, there, there was a lot of kind of like, you really like that thing? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Anyway, plugged it in and it all works. Everything on this thing works. And the condition of this thing, this is the best condition I've ever seen one of these guitars in. There is a few nicks and dints and dents on it. Nothing major. Uh, all the electrics work for now. Um, this guitar is active as well, people with tube. You can see the battery compartment there in the back. But um, it all worked and it played great. The, you know, uh, there, it, there is this. This is hysterical. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but the truss rod is actually wobbling backwards and forwards, but actually still does its job. Figure that one out. Anyway, uh, like I said, it stays in tune, it behaves and it sounds great, and the effects are really, really, really wicked. And I'm gonna show you them in isolation now, before we get to kind of like the main playing uh, part of this video where I just get kind of lost in this thing. Um, I'm just gonna show you the effects in kind of isolation. So uh, before we get going, people with tube, I'm just gonna show you the controls here. So here you have a volume slash on off switch. Remember, this guitar is active. Um, it must be one of the earliest active instruments. I think. I mean, let me know, people of the tube, if you know, like I say, these things came out, I think they came out in 1978. There's no way to date this one. I don't know if there's any way to date any of them, to be honest with you. But uh, I think they came out in 1978 and ran to like 1980, 81, and then they stopped making them. I don't actually know 100%. Uh, that's kind of like, you know, what I've read and what I can remember of these things. And, um, like I say, it's active, so, but I suppose they did have kind of like some bases in the 70s, some bases and guitars that are active in the 70s, don't they? But it's, it's, it's definitely one of like the forerunners to an active instrument. So anyway, let's get back to the guitar. So, volume slash on-off switch, you can hear me click it on. So at this point in time, it's turned all the way down, turned off, listen to this. So it's like a latching switch, so that turns it off and on. This middle one here is your tone dial, and this one here controls the speed of the effects. So like the tremolo, um, it says echo, it's not an echo. It's ba basically the effects you have are cocked wah and tremolo and fuzz. The fuzz is amazing. I'll get to that in a bit. And also you can, well, I'll, 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 let me continue. Run away with myself. So that's the speed dial, controls the rate of the tremolo. Uh, at the back here, you've got two inputs. You've got a guitar amp in, and you've also got a headphone in. Now the headphone in on this this one, and I think all of them, doesn't work because there's no actual way to drive the signal. So 
apparently, from what I've read, again, I don't know how true this is, people, too, because you just never know. The history on these things is a little bit sketchy. Uh, apparently, they never got round to designing the headphones that would have come with this guitar, so they just sold the guitar as is, and that just remained. And I don't know. Who knows? This is all kind of, let's say, what I've read. Who knows the actual history? So that's that. So let's get now onto all these switches that you can see. So, first one here is in and out of phase. So let me show you that really quick. So at this point, oh, and by, by the way, these are not humbuckers. These are two single coils disguised as humbuckers. They're actually single coils. And they are both on at the same time, all the time. You can't, there's no selector switch on the guitar, if you've noticed. There's no kind of like, you can't have a bridge pickup. You can't have a neck pickup. It's just both on all at the same time. And it gives you this sound, and it's absolutely... Stunning. The in, in between sound, like both these pickups on, these single calls, it sounds great. <laughs> I'm in an A minor mood today. Let's shift key. Let's go to my favorite key of C sharp minor. Sounds amazing. So that's just the um, guitar as is. So now what we can do is with this switch, we can knock the guitar out of phase. You can immediately hear it go quieter. So it kind of like, um, it's like hum cancelling when it's out of phase. I bet that gives you the, your Peter Green. So it gives you that kind of like Peter Greeny kind of sound, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to put it back in phase. Um, so now, let's go on to the effects here. So this next switch along turns the effects on and off. And when all these switches are up, the guitar just turns off. There's nothing selected. So the first one I'm going to show you is the uh, apparent echo. Remember, echo. It's not echo, it's tremolo, as you're about to hear. <laughs> And it adds this kind of like cocked wah sound because it kind of engages like a preamp circuit. So you, you can hear, if I take the effect out, the guitar's quite clean. Now if I add the effects, it'll it'll overdrive the guitar a bit more because you're adding like this preamp circuit that, um, that drives the effects. So off. You notice there's like, like a little split second there where the effects take a little second to kick in. So off, flick the switch, it'll take a second, then it'll come in. So now using the speed dial, I can adjust the rate of this. So this is the slowest it'll go. But if I, I start turning it down, the rate goes up. Until you get all the way up, which sounds ace. Okay, so that's that one. Now, if I put turn the echo off, so the guitar's dead, and then I turn the middle one down, nothing happens because the outside two effects, echo and whirlwind, are basically the main effects. The one in the middle that is tremolo, wah, who knows, is kind of like, it doesn't really do much. It, it, yeah, it's, it's a bit mad. So, but if I add in back the tremolo again, the echo, tremolo slash echo, and then put the middle switch down, 
slightly change the tonality of it, also takes away the tremolo. It's still there, but it's a different sound now. And it's overdriving it more as well. You can hear it starting to go, starting to run away with itself. So you can still hear that tremolo is there, but it's kind of like adding more to the signal. It's like a different part of like a cocked wah sound. When that switch, when that middle switch is out, it's a lot more kind of like toe down. And then when you put this one in, it's more kind of mid to heel down. I don't think that will come across, but it's there. So now if I turn the guitar off again and put in the whirlwind effect, this is kind of like really kind of like... You can hear those beats again. Again, I control that, again, with that speed dial. And then I can add the, uh, the middle switch in. Put it back in phase. effect is a lot faster straight off the bat so that's the effects um so back to guitar off now here's the fuzz so uh let you hear let me turn the fuzz on turn the effects off so back to just kind of straight guitar turning into fuzz uh like this it's a fantastic sounding fuzz It's great, it really is great, I love it to bits. A really cool thing as well, if you kind of like stick that over a, a heavier distortion, so like for instance, like uh, turn the effects off, I'll put the Marshall Governor 2 on. So if I now engage the fuzz again, it's just gonna send it crazy. Turn the tone down all the way and just play like death chords. to just kind of like semi-clean. So turn that back off. Nothing, because everything's up again. So, um, so now let's turn everything on. So, echo slash tremolo, middle switch, whirlwind, and fuzz. This is like the whole thing. <laughs> Money for nothing. In a way, uh, which one is it that I turn off that makes it even more money for nothing? Yeah, if I turn the whirlwind off, it's even more. And if I turn the fuzz off, I think it's even more. It 
really gives you that, like I say, that Cox Wild sound, which is really, really cool. This guitar is absolutely fantastic. And here's another really cool thing as well that I find really funny. The volume is actually a volume. It's not like, and I know that sounds really weird, a stupid statement, but let me explain. So the volume on normal guitars, you as you roll it down, the guitar will clean up and not necessarily, you don't necessarily lose volume uh, if, you're on like a, if you're on a distorted sound. Whereas with this one, it's actually just a volume. Uh, it gives you the same sound, just lower. So if I go back to turn the effects back on, turn the fuzz on. So if I bring the volume down now, that sound is going to just stay the same, just the guitar is going to get quieter. Like, the, the, the actual fuzz effect, the actual kind of distortion of it, never actually goes away. It just gets, it doesn't clean up. That sound just gets quieter, which I always thought, which I thought was quite cool and quite amusing because I was like wondering when the fuzz was on. Oh, I wonder if it'll kind of do that clean up thing that we all know and love fuzzies do. No, the guitar just turns itself down level wise. Like everything's just still there, it's just quieter. Uh, and I love that it's got on off. Super cool. But yeah, and it looks stunning. Uh, they are hollow body. Um, uh, I think, well, this, this one, and I think most of them, they are hollow body, they're plywood with veneers on top and back. Uh, the, the, the sunburst on this one is to just die for. It really is. And I love the headstock. I love the logo on the headstock. Like I said, this one's all original as well, people. Nothing's been changed. Uh, maybe the frets. I don't know. Um... The ones I've seen, all the frets that are in them look like these. So these could be the original. It might be a refret. I don't know. I doubt it. It doesn't look like a refret. They look like the original frets. On the other ones I've seen, these are kind of what they look like. So who knows? Uh, definitely original nut, original machine heads, tailpiece, bridge, uh, pickups, pots. Uh, one thing I did replace is the uh, the gold speed knobs. I have the originals, but the tone dial one was broken inside, and it was glued. It was super glued together, and it was kind of super glued on, which is a big no no for me. So I changed out the, uh, the the gold speed knobs to new ones, and I've got the original. I've got the originals safe and sound in that box just there, actually, which you can't see. But there's a box right there, and they're in there, and they're all nice and safe. So if I ever did want to sell it, I don't know why I would ever want to do that. Um, I can put them back on if need be. Well, maybe not the middle one because it's knackered, but yeah. The only thing I am missing is the scratch plate. This guitar did come with a scratch plate, and it was like um, it's like a three-quarter size scratch plate of a normal Les Paul. It kind of cut off there, so you had the normal kind of size, uh, normal kind of scratch plate kind of shape, sorry, should I say, but it cuts off there. Uh, it still has the screws in the guitar, but the scratch plate has long gone. I can kind of see why. You know, it looks fantastic, but um, I would have liked to have it. You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter because the rest of the guitar's there. I'm not going to complain about a bit of plastic that I can easily replace and just make a new one of. Anyway, let me let me just show you this though. Look at look at that. And again, the condition of this thing is actually outrageous. You can see it's so shiny. And there's a couple of dink, dints and dents, especially a couple there. But it's nothing major. It really isn't anything major. Like I said, I've seen so so many of these, and they're all so worse for wear. This one is in just a good good shape. But the, the frets are questionable at points because they're so worn. But it's it plays great. It really does feel great. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to let you just. Uh, I'm just going to get lost in this thing and let you hear what come out of it. I have made a deal with myself, people of the tube, in this uh, outro bit of music. Uh, music, like, well, I've already filmed it, outro bits of bits of music, should I say, that I'm not allowed to use my governor or the DS2 or my wah-wah pedal because I have to use the effects in the guitar. So the only uh, pedals I'm going to be using for the outro jam, uh, for well, for the outro jams, is obviously my zoom pedal for reverb, um, cloudburst, because I just can't live without that, Mel 9, maybe, um... I can't remember if I used the Mel 9 now. I think I did for a brief bit. Uh, I'm a Line 6 delay modeler, and the Golden Plex is going to be on all the time like it always is. Other than that, all the effects you hear, like the tremolos and the cock kind of wah sounds and stuff like that, and the fuzz, 
like my lead kind of sound is all going to come from this guitar because I want you to hear the guitar. If I stick the governor on, it's the governor and this. If I put the DS2 on, it's the DS2 and this. If I put the wire on, it'll kind of muddle, muddy the waters so you won't hear the actual wah sound of this thing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video tube. Like I said, I'm so happy to have one of these things. This this is like, I, I've wanted one of these things for ages. It's not a guitar I'm going to use loads of, but it's one I've just wanted for the collection, if you will. Like I say, um... It's just, it's so, it's such a little curio. I love it to bits. I really do. It's absolutely fantastic. It sounds great, plays great, is great. Cool, cool, cool guitar. And it looks amazing. The, the Tobacco Sunburst is, like I say, to die for. It really is. Oh, and by the way, it's not as thick as a normal Les Paul Custom. Um, it's a lot thinner. And it's not a lawsuit either because it doesn't have the Gibson headstock. Anyway, um... Yeah, there you go, people tube. Let, uh, let me know in the comment section below what do you think to these things. Have you ever tried one of these things? Do you own one of these things? You know, what did you think to the one you played? You know, uh, let me know. Comment section below. Other than that, thank you very much, Steve, for watching. If you like the videos I do, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Links to that down there. Plus links to my band and all that stuff. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Steve, for watching. See you again. Goodbye now.
Thank you. 